You in for the ride of your life tonight, baby. What time it is? Uh. Welcome to another episode of the Untitled Podcast. Let's discuss the time. What you are about to hear is deeply disturbing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the time. What time is it? Some asses wiggling. I want some perfection. <laughs> oh, that was so nice. When Prince was signed to Warner Brothers Records, his contract allowed him to create and produce other artists. And sometimes the materials were songs that he had left over or were not right for his career, and it was a way for Prince to put out more commercial music. He spun the time off as a side project. The original seven came together in 1981 from the remnants of bands called Flight Time and Grand Central. Oh no, but yes, yeah, I think I think I need to go to the grocery store though. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Linda, yeah. Linda, yeah. what do you mean? Give me a little bit of that pepper. Pepper. Give me a little bit of that salt. Salt. Put it in the skillet and cook it. Cook it. On that stove I bought. Oh yeah. <laughs> Motherfucking time! I mean, the guys in that Prince movie? Yeah, Purple Rain. That shit was so gay. Fucking 80s stuff. <laughs> The original seven were Monty Muir on keyboards and backing vocals, Jellybean Johnson on drums and percussion, Jesse Johnson on guitar, plays a mean guitar, Jerome Benton, who 
as famous as just being Jerome the valet. Back in the day, during one performance, uh, Morris Day asked for someone to bring him a mirror, and Benton ran to the restroom and tore a mirror out and brought it on stage for Morris Day to comb his hair. There's Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam, who played bass and keyboards respectively and were longtime collaborators with Janet Jackson. They kind of took Prince's Minneapolis sound as part of their own with their own production. They would eventually get fired by Prince because they missed a gig while they were producing another artist in another city. And of course, who can forget Morris Day, the man who nearly stole the show in Purple Rain. Morris was so successful in the role in Purple Rain as Prince's antagonist that Prince took back the character meaning that he kind of embodied some of the oddities of Morris's character in the movie Under the Cherry Moon. It's obvious little Miss Mary has never been off the city block. Now read it aloud so we can all hear how knowledgeable you are. Wrecker step. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? You don't, do you? Wrecker step, Wrecker step, it's nothing. <laughs> It is something. Come on, read it again. <laughs> this time, say it louder. Rekka Stowe. Louder. Rekka Stowe! I give up. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. If you wanted to buy a Sam Cook, Abbott, where would you go? The Rekka Stowe. <laughs> <laughs> And Prince is kind of known for that, because there was a band called Maserati, which was another one of his spinoff groups. And he gave them a bluesy acoustic demo of the song Kiss. They made it a little funkier, and Prince heard it, and he took the song back. Kiss! Women are girls, rule my world. same thing happened to them, except for, for the song Jerk Out. Prince took the song back and gave it to the time. In fact, Prince developed the Morris Day character, and you can hear this in the demo I'm about to play you. It's Morris Day on the drums, and Prince just sort of ab-libbing and fucking around on the bass, but he's teaching Morris how the character should speak. Yeah, what a, yeah, what a nice breezy motherfucker. Ah. The way all of Prince's alter ego bands worked, uh, whether it was Jill Jones, Sheila E., mm -hmm. The Time, Vanity Six, Apollonia Six, the way those bands worked were as follows. Prince would record tracks for them, and he would record all the instruments, unless he brought in like Eric Leeds to do horns or something like that. Pretty much it was all Prince. So the singer would come in and then sing and match Prince's vocals line by line. In, in, in the case of the time, Prince would leave guitar solo space available for Jesse, because Jesse was a very different kind of guitar player from Prince. So Prince would certainly not lay down a Prince guitar part for Jesse to follow. Hmm. Jesse would put his own parts on there. But for the most part, all the keyboard parts and everything else was all Prince. And then the band's job was just to be the live version mm -hmm. of this alter ego. Morris did his own vocals, of course, but uh, that was after Prince would lay a guide vocal down. The character that you see of Morris was an alter ego of Prince. Mm -hmm. 
about the horn of America. Have you heard about the brand new band called the Bird? Hold on, Sam. Uh. Uh. Time have put out four albums as The Time, and another album under the moniker of the original seven called Condensate. Morris Day's had four solo albums, but there might be a few things about Prince and The Time I can tell you about. For one thing, with the exception of Morris Day, who was required to follow Prince's guide vocals note for note, none of the band played on the debut album. Prince played all the instruments and credited the production to himself as his alter ego Jamie Starr. There were no songwriting credits given on the album. On the second album, What Time Is It? It's like the previous album. Largely written, recorded, and produced by Prince. Contained no input from the band members other than Morris Day. Although, all the band members were credited. On early tours, such as the Triple Threat Tour, The Time served as Vanity Six backing band from behind a curtain. Then they would play their own hour-long set. They liked the arrangement because the band saw it as free money. Terry Lewis said, I'll play behind Vanity 6 for 30 minutes for $250, no problem. I was going to have to do a sound check anyway. Now, Vanity 6 was another one of Prince's spinoff groups. It eventually became Apollonia 6 when Vanity quit to take a contract with Motown Records. But some interesting facts about Vanity 6 is that Prince originally wanted to call them the Hookers, and Vanity's name was going to be Vagina. And one of the songs he had worked out for them was Manic Monday, which of course ended up being a big hit for the Bangles. Six o'clock already, I was just in the middle of a dream. I was kissing Valentino by the Christopher Italian stream. But I can't be late, cause then I guess I just won't get paid. These are the days when you wish your bed was already made It's just another man Denise Matthews is Vanity's real name, and when Prince met her, she was actually Rick James's date. Rick's idea was to create a group of women that were not wearing the same dress and the same gloves and the same wig and the same shoes. He said he wanted to create a female group. And I guess he put forth that idea to Prince, and Prince did it first. Prince produced the all-girl group Vanity Six. Rick, he's pretty pissed about that. Prince also started up another band around one of his childhood friends, the Time, featuring Morris Day. Rick answered with his own group, Process and the Do Rags. Everybody in the house tonight who feels that you do what's right, put your do rags in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Vanity was supposed to be the female lead in Purple Rain, and even recorded some of the songs like Sex Shooter with her on vocal instead of Apollonia. Sex Shooter. Oh yeah, why Vanity 6? Why Apollonia 6? Count the nipples.
it's funny because on the albums, Morris calls out the other bandmates' names and songs that they didn't even play or record the parts for. integrated 1995, possibly due to Prince's inactivity and disinterest with them, perhaps even a little jealousy. Some of the band members went on to be in The Family, which was another spinoff group that had Jellybean Johnson with Susanna Melvoin, Jerome, and Paul Peterson. They released a self-titled album in 1985, after which they split. Of course, Prince wrote and performed everything on that album as well, and it contains the seeds of Nothing Compares to You, which was perfected by Sinead O'Connor. It's been seven hours and thirteen days since you took your love away oh, 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 oh. I go out every night and sleep all day Since you took your love away oh, 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 oh. Since you've been gone I can do whatever I I can see whomever I choose oh, 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 oh. I can eat my dinner in a fancy restaurant But nothing, I said nothing can take away this blues Cause no This is Original 7 Breaking News. Mr. Day, Mr. Day, Mr. 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 Day, Mr. Day. Mr. Hold on, hold on, settle down. There's, there's room for everybody. You. Mr. Day, how do you address the rumors that you're no longer cool? Girl, if you dream I came to jerk around, you better wake up and release it.
1990, the time, the original seven members got back together for the Graffiti Bridge movie and soundtrack and a new album called Pandemonium. All right, I'm going to drop in this song just to make people's heads explode. Can I rap to you, sugar, tonight? That was fucked up what you did, man. Morris doesn't like it, and I don't like it either. And that fell off eventually, but in 2011, they released a new Time album called Condensate. They weren't allowed to use the name The Time, so they released it under the original seven. Step on the game. Ah! Much loved band that didn't deserve their fate, and if nothing else, Uptown Funk shows us why.
now check this out. We gonna walk till the song's over. In other words, meet me at the bar in 32 measures. Cool. Cool. And if you're good, I'll let you work the stick in my ride. has been produced by Donnie Shattuck.